You shouldn't drink a green tea that looks like this. And in this video, we're gonna show you why. You may also be wondering why green tea is usually not green in color, and we'll explain a little bit about that as well. First, let's take a look at that orange tea. This orange or brown color tea was prepared using a tea bag. Most may think of this as the standard green tea, but these tea bags actually contain incredibly low quality leaves. These leaves are sometimes even made from the leftover leaves of the tea production process. The low quality leaves are then chopped up into almost a dust and packed into a tea bag alongside paper, plastic, glue, and other materials used to construct the tea bag itself. Of course, these materials can really interfere with the taste and health benefits of your cup of tea, but that's a topic for another video. Because these leaves in the tea bag are such low quality and they're chopped up so finely, they really produce this unappealing orange or brown color. If you see this color in a green tea, you should assume that it's low quality. The flavor will most likely be flat and bitter, which is in stark contrast to the sweet and complex flavor profiles of good quality loose leaf green tea. The one exception to the orange tea rule is a green tea called hojicha. This is technically a green tea because the leaves are unoxidized, but once the leaves are dried, they are taken through a roasting process. During this roasting process, the color of the leaves change from green to brown, and the color of the infusion also becomes a reddish brown or orange color. Instead of having the fresh vegetable or slightly citrusy flavor profiles you might typically find in a Japanese green tea, hojicha has much warmer flavor profiles of coffee, caramel, and chocolate. Hojicha is an inexpensive tea, but it's very enjoyable in terms of its taste. In the case of hojicha, the color comes not from the fact that the leaves are poor quality, but rather from the fact that they are roasted. But let's go back to this brown bag tea. This is meant to be a regular green tea, but you see the color is unappealing and the flavor is even more so. If a green tea is unroasted and it still looks like this, you should really try to avoid it. This is not to say that green tea should always be green in color, but rather it should exist on a spectrum between light yellow and deep green. The name green tea actually refers to the fact that the tea leaves are green rather than the liquid itself. The reason that green tea leaves are green and black tea leaves are brown is because green tea leaves are unoxidized. After the tea leaves are picked, they will begin to oxidize naturally and eventually turn completely brown in color. In order to prevent this from happening, a farmer will apply heat to the leaves after the harvest. This deactivates the enzyme oxidase that causes the oxidation and locks in the green color and flavor of the tea. In China, the tea leaves are heated in a large hot pan after the harvest, and in Japan it's more common to steam the tea leaves. This is why Chinese green teas tend to be a bit more yellow in color and a lot of Japanese green teas tend to drift more into the green direction. An extreme version of this would be Fukumushi Sencha, or deep steam tea. These Japanese teas are steamed for just a few extra seconds, and during that time, the tea leaves begin to break down, allowing more to be released into the water. If you see these vibrant, cloudy green colors, chances are you're looking at either a Fukumushi Sencha or a tea mixed with matcha powder. The taste of these teas matches the color, with more of these rich, full-bodied, and steamed vegetable flavors coming out. The fact that these green teas are greener in color doesn't necessarily make them better. It just comes down to how they are produced. There are many great yellow green teas out there, and many great green green teas out there, but as a general rule, you should avoid orange and brown. Just as not all green teas are green in color, there are also inconsistencies across different tea types. Some raw poor teas are considered to be dark tea or black tea, but they actually have a light orange color. Let's take a short detour to explain the different colors you might find in your cup and what they might be able to tell you about the tea you're drinking. First, we have the white or pale tea. You may come across a tea that's extremely light in color and almost looks clear. These tea colors often correspond to white teas made from the buds of the tea plant, like silver needle. These sun-dried buds of the tea plant produce an incredibly light color. The color of these teas can range anywhere from clear to light beige and anywhere in between. Next, we have yellow tea. The tea colors that are perhaps the most common are these yellows. Green tea is the most common type of tea in China and Japan, and most of these teas take on a yellowish color. There is also a tea type called yellow tea, which is somewhere in between a white tea and a green tea, and these also tend to be yellow in color. As we mentioned before, people tend to think of these light green and dark green colors as the standard for green teas, but these are actually quite rare. Fukumushi teas are really the only teas that can reliably achieve this green color. Of course, matcha tea also shows these green colors, but this is because the leaves are ground into a powder and mixed directly into water. Because you are consuming the entire leaf, you not only get these strong tea colors, but you also get more of the health benefits as well. Gyokuro tea can sometimes achieve these green tea colors, particularly when it's prepared as a cold brew. This tea is shaded for a longer time, which maximizes the sweetness and also the chlorophyll of the tea. 
This higher chlorophyll content is why the leaves are such a dark shade of green. This tea usually brews a yellowish green color, but it can occasionally drift into the green direction. As we discussed before, orange tea is something you should avoid when it comes to green tea, but it can be seen in various high quality oolongs. You will find that light oolongs fall into the yellow category and dark or ruby oolongs fall into the red category but many oolongs end up somewhere in the middle in this orange color. White teas made from mostly the tea leaves rather than the buds will produce this yellowish orange as well. While ripe pu'er is usually black in color, raw pu'er tends to be a light shade of orange. Next we have red tea. Red tea is one of the few examples where the tea colors and the tea types are aligned. Red tea, or as we know it in the West as black tea, tends to brew a reddish infusion. While a lot of red teas start to drift into the direction of brown, you will notice that there's a tiny hint of red to them, particularly when you hold them up to the light. This can be one of the most beautiful tea colors to look at. Black tea. Finally, we have the darkest of the tea colors, and that is black tea. This is where the tea colors and tea varieties start to get confusing again, but it's most important to remember that in China and Japan, black tea is called red tea. This makes the tea colors more in line with the tea varieties. Heicha, or dark tea, is used to refer to teas that have been post-fermented. The most famous of this post-fermented tea is pu'er tea, which is a dark tea from the area of Yunnan. The ripe pu'er teas brew an extremely dark color, almost like coffee. This more extreme version of black tea truly is black in color. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you found it helpful when it comes to examining the color of a tea. If you have any questions about Japanese green tea or tea in general, please feel free to leave those in the comments below. Until then, we'll see you next time.